I've come a long way in the last seven, eight, nine years. I don't really want to demonize foods. I don't want to scare people away from eating specific foods. The only foods I like to demonize are like total blatant junk foods and hyper palatable processed garbage, which unfortunately is a lot of food. But either way, there's some foods that I stopped eating over the last few years, nine to be exact. I could probably go on, but just because I don't eat these foods anymore doesn't mean that you don't need to eat them anymore. They're not necessarily all bad. Now, some of them I avoid because I just don't think they're that great for me anymore, but others I've just found better options. So I'm going to share nine foods that I don't eat anymore, but I'm going to give alternatives for each one. And maybe this can help influence some of your decision making, but you shouldn't let my changes completely dictate how your diet should change. The first one is cashews. And yeah, they're kind of innocent. Like, but at the end of the day, when it comes down to the literal effect of cashews, like they are as close to a poisonous food as you can get. And I say that literally, not because, oh my God, it's poison food. No, because it literally, like when they harvest it, they have to be wearing like full protective clothing because it's covered in urethral, the same stuff that's in poison oak that makes you itch. And I realized personally that when I start eating cashews, I can literally start retaining a pound or two of water. I get itchy, my nose gets stuffy, and I was talking to my doctor, who's a very good doctor, by the way, a doctor that's been on this channel before, but shall rename nameless. Uh, He's the one that said, well, you know, cashews are pretty darn close to as poisonous as you can get, so maybe you should cut those out. Anyhow, so I don't do cashews anymore. They're also super high in phytic acids, super high in omega-6s, like the highest out of all the nuts, and they're super high carb compared to other nuts. So now I go for pecans and I go for macadamia nuts. Those are the ones I lean into. I don't even do almonds that much anymore. Pecans and macadamia nuts, super low phytic acid content, higher omega-3 content, well, at least in the pecans, but super low omega-6. So let's move on to the next one. I used to eat turkey bacon quite a bit. And you know, I'm still not really like, Actually, I am kind of opposed to the idea of turkey bacon. It just seems kind of wrong, like taking bacon and making it with like turkey breast. But most of the turkey bacon that you find is like a little bit of turkey meat pressed with a bunch of other stuff. And in an effort to reduce calories, I was going for turkey bacon and I was realizing I was, this is a total Franken food. Just eat a little bit of the real stuff and just don't go overboard. So yeah, turkey bacon's kind of out of my life. Like if someone handed me an omelet with turkey bacon in it, I'd probably throw it at them. But no, I would at least take the bits of turkey bacon out and then throw it at them and then eat the rest of the omelet. So what do I eat now? I eat regular bacon, but I don't even do that that often. I usually go for like a good quality Parma ham or a good quality breakfast ham that isn't super processed. I'm a huge fan of Portuguese sausage when I can find it. Like if I'm out in Hawaii, I will go to town on some Portuguese sausage. Another one that I just don't eat anymore is rice cakes. And that's one that simply because when I started monitoring my glucose, I realized, holy cow, like I would spike more from one or two rice cakes than I would from an entire bowl of brown rice or even a small bowl of white rice in a fraction of the calories. I'm like, okay, now having a glucose spike isn't the end of the world, but I'm like, is this really what I wanna be doing to myself? Like constantly spiking? And I wasn't having them all the time. I would just have them maybe post-workout or have them occasionally because of a low calorie snack when I would have carbs, but it just didn't make sense anymore. So now what I do, if I need something as like a delivery vehicle for something, because I used to put protein on a rice cake, I used to do all kinds of things. I use those siete tortillas, this is not a plug for them, those like almond flour or chickpea tortillas. They are awesome. They're super low net carb, super low glycemic. They barely spike my glucose and it's still like an easy snack. I could put some almond butter on it. I could do something like that and it's easy. The next one, I don't get rotisserie chickens when I'm on the go anymore. I used to pop into grocery stores and get a rotisserie chicken because I'm like, this is at least a way for me to get some protein and some fats in. And then I realized at most grocery stores, there is so much MSG and so much in the way of preservatives and weird stuff. Like why, sh why would I do this to myself? Why, even if I go to Whole Foods and I get a rotisserie chicken there, the amount of sodium in is one, and I'm not like anti-salt, but I'm talking like sometimes two, 3,000 milligrams of sodium in a rotisserie chicken and unfortunately, I'd eat the whole dang thing, but independent of that, I realized how much fat is in chicken skin, and I'm not afraid of fat, but when we're talking like this much chicken skin, having like 300 calories, I'm like, okay, let me ditch the skin, and, so, and then I'm like, wait a minute, I'm being wasteful. Like, 
is there something better? So now when I go to the grocery store and I'm on the go, I just get cold cuts. I get things like Applegate Farms deli meat. I look at cold cuts like turkey breast, chicken breast, deli cuts, flip over the label and make sure there's no weird things. If it's something just like meat and salt and rosemary extract, that's as good as gold for me. So I'll do that. It's way cheaper, way lower calorie, and I can control my fat intake a little bit more so I'm not having calories going through the roof. The other thing that I do is I just prepare now. I, I went through a phase there where like I was fasting so much, I didn't have to prepare too much, but if I'm gonna be on the road, I should prepare. So I cook up a bunch of small burger patty sliders ahead of time, and it's not hard to do. Like I can put them in the oven, I can put them on the grill, and I can have a bunch of them. You could even literally freeze them. It's not that hard to do. I put a link down below for ButcherBox too, if you wanna get some really like seriously amazing tasting bison. They have amazing ground bison and amazing grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef. Which, dude, I really do think that that ground beef is, I think ground beef is underrated. Like you get collagen with it, you get some of the gristle that's actually good for you, but man, we throw that sucker out. That's like, we always say, oh, it's the nice cuts of meat that we want. The ground beef is where it's at. Anyhow, so that link down below gets you grass-fed, grass-finished cuts of meat, not only the cuts of meat, but the ground beef, but also chicken options, pork options, scallops, other seafood options, real bacon, good stuff all at that link down below and then it gets delivered to your doorstep. So it takes one step out of the prep. Seriously, give them a shot. It's called ButcherBox. It'll change your life, at least as far as the quality is concerned. Like if you go to the grocery store and you look at meat now, it's like bright red. It's like not even the way it's supposed to be. You look at ButcherBox, it's like a deep red, the way that it should look. Anyhow, that link is down below, top line of the description. Next one is one that I stopped eating a long time ago, but it's important to note, and that's margarine. Margarine and shortening. Like when I was growing up, we would use margarine. We would use shortening. We were trying to do the heart healthy thing because we didn't know better growing up, right? Oh my gosh, now what do I eat? I just eat the real thing. I either eat butter or I go for ghee. I'm much more of a ghee guy. I like the short chain fatty acids that I get from ghee. I like the way it feels on my gut. I like the way my brain feels. I feel better with ghee than I do with regular butter. So if I'm gonna use butter, I'm like, well, do I have an opportunity to use ghee instead? I'll use ghee, I'll cook with ghee. It's just beneficial. Short chain fatty acids for the gut. So as far as gut microbiome is concerned, also could be uh, some advantages there. But ditch the margarine, that is pure trans fats. It's not just not good. That one is flat out, should be avoided. It is dangerous, leads to visceral fat accumulation, and we've seen that in the data, and I don't care who wants to make a video chopping this up, the data is strong. Trans fats are no bueno. Another one I don't eat anymore, I occasionally have them, but really not too often, not like I used to, are the Starbucks egg bites. For one, they are calorie bombs. Like if you get the bacon ones, there's like 350 calories in them. The egg white ones are a little less, but what really threw me off is they are really pretty high in carbs. Like they add potato starch, they add these other starches to them. Now there are other options that you can get at the store that are like egg bites. You just wanna look around and make sure that they do not have uh, potato starch in them. Like Costco has a good one. There's some other uh, Vital Farms makes a good one. But instead of egg bites, I just opt for other things altogether. Like if I'm going to Starbucks, I'm probably not going to get breakfast. I'm going to Starbucks, I'm there to get a tea and I'll pop into a grocery store and get some deli meat or something. I just, they were usually something if I was in a pinch, but now I realize like what good are they? If I'm doing low carb or keto, they're really too high carb and a lot of people fall into that trap. Another one I don't do anymore, you will hardly ever see me getting a restaurant salad. I don't necessarily wanna be like my friend Mark Sisson, who I've talked to. He used to carry his little sachets of his own salad dressing with him so that he could do this. I'm just like, you know what? Just give me the steamed veggies. So it's just a trap. Like, okay, in an effort to get a couple grams of fiber and some few nutrients from romaine lettuce, you're telling me that I have to like get that thousand calories of oil. I could have that salad without the oil, but come on. You tell me, is a salad with no oil better than like some delicious steamed broccoli or steamed asparagus? Just ask for steamed veggies. It is a game changer and you end up saving probably hundreds, if not thousands of calories. I just never do it anymore. Another one I never eat anymore is farm-raised salmon. You're never gonna find me at a grocery store opting for the farm-raised salmon. And a lot of times you're not gonna find me getting the wild-caught salmon either. Why? Because it ends up just being a ripoff at that rate when there's a lot of other inexpensive options. I love salmon, but I'm gonna opt for things like sardines and mackerel and oysters and scallops. Why? Because I can get similar nutritional value, in fact, even more omega-3s 
from those inexpensive small fish that are sustainable, inexpensive, they have the high levels of DHA, they have the vitamin D because I can get the skin and the bone. Don't get me wrong, like I would love to have wild caught, deep red, beautiful salmon, but if you think I'm gonna be spending 20 to $40 a pound on that stuff, you're completely lost, like no way. And the farm raised salmon that might be $7.99 to $10.99 a pound, I just don't want stuff that is artificially made orange. No matter what I have to say about salmon, the fact that something is artificially orange is just weird. And the last one, I don't get fast food cheese anymore. What does that mean? Well, I'm human, and especially when I'm doing keto or I'm just trying to get protein, it's not totally uncommon for me to like roll through and maybe get a burger patty from Carl's Jr. or a burger patty from In-N-Out or Wendy's or something like that. Typically, I would get it with the cheese, and then I realized that most places aren't using real cheese. Even if you get like a mushroom Swiss, you find there's all kinds of added trans fats and weird stuff. I'm like, that sucks, I don't wanna do that. In-N-Out is the only one that might be an exception. They might have somewhat real cheese, but I just deal without the cheese. Like if I go to In-N-Out or if I go to Carl's Jr., I just get a burger patty or two or three and just don't do any cheese on it. Like I save hundreds of calories for one and I'm not getting mystery cheese. It's just, you don't have to completely ditch it if that's what you do when you're on the road. But trust me, if you just cut out the cheese and put a little bit of mustard or something instead, you might lose a slight percentage of taste, but it's going to get you so much further in the long run. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.